Alrighty then, I thought it was time we uh, took apart something Land Rover related. So we have here an ANR4499 and a broken socket. Sorry, my desk is a mess. And uh, this is the air suspension controller from a P38. This is manufactured by Dunlop on behalf of Range Rover. And I can see rivets, so I'm slightly worried about how far we're going to get with this. So those of you who don't know, the Range Rover P38, which was the second version of the Range Rover that Land Rover made, was fitted, I think, almost universally with air suspension. And at the time, this was amazing. This was a big selling point. And the suspension system was able to self-level the vehicle within certain limits. Uh, adjust the height which means you could have a comfortable drive on road or um, just as much ground clearance as the older uh, Range Rover off-road and the system was okay at the time but a lot of the vehicles it's starting to get a bit old bit old hat crusty and clunky and sadly a lot of people do decide to put springs on you're entitled to do what you were uh, what you want with your own vehicle I just don't like the idea of putting springs on so this is a module that lives under the passenger seat I believe and controls the system so let's see just how far we can get into this before we run into uh, the need to deploy a drill Uh, in the words of uh, vehicle, somebody's been here before. It's also possible that the uh, grade of parts that uh, Range Rover are known for using the screws have just uh, wobbled out. Let's just see. We can push it out. Oh, that's not a good sign. So there we have the end plate. So our uh, multi-way connector is actually part of. Yeah, the multi-way connector is actually uh, part of the case. And this is the shortest teardown ever. We're now stuck. Hmm. Back in a second. How many points do I get for aluminium swarf in my coffee? Well, this drill bit may be bent. I know everything's covered in metal shavings. Can we get this out here? Oh, that's it. That's it. And that, children, is why you never have drinks on your workbench. And we're out. Everything is conformal coated. That's a fairly unremarkable cylinder with a bit of insulation on. So there's your first bit of knowledge. If you're going to uh, try and get into this, then uh, you're going to need to do, uh, do some drilling. What's actually in here? Well, to be fair, that's uh, a lot of box and a lot of PCB for... Something could be a lot smaller. Let's just pop, if I can, these clips off so we'll see what devices we've got on the end here. I'm guessing one of these is going to be a regulator. Uh, we should, in theory, have a driver for possibly the pump. There is a driver module that goes with this actually in the valve body that converts the low level outputs of this through to uh, high level outputs for the bolt for the solenoids and possibly the pump. I don't know. It looks like we might have something going on there that can drive the pump. Um, if you've got issues with a particular solenoid not working and the solenoid is good then it's the driver board you want to go after first and then start looking at uh, what we've got going on here. So predictably, what have we got? Uh, I can't actually see much on them. Have I got a blade handy to uh, scrape on them? Everything is conform coated. So you can't see much on those. And a quick look under here on the pins suggests that we've got possibly at least two voltage regulators here. 
I'm not quite sure why we need to, but we've got certainly a switching type regulator there. I'd say it's a switcher, but I don't know that it is. Oh, there's tag tantalums in here. So if you get one of these that suddenly blows the fuse and stops working, you need to go after these two tag tantalums. Three tag tantalums. We've got another high power chip down there. That is a power transistor. We've got a number of power transistors here. I don't remember how many solenoids there are actually there for this. It's been a while since I've taken the apart. So we've got... Oh, this would be much easier if everything wasn't covered in conformal coating. So we've got an LM324 there, which I believe is an op-amp, multi-op amp. I'd say possibly four looking at what we've got there. Processor-wise, we have a Motorola logo ZC99229CFN, and we are running at 4 megahertz. Now, someone has already done a replacement control module that works with the based on the Arduino, so certainly that chip running at 4 megahertz is well within the scope of an 8 or 16 megahertz um, Arduino. So, yeah, I think what we've got going on here is we have, I want to say it's a switching type regulator, L4947, it rings a bell. Uh, it definitely looks like it's involved in power supply. What is that tan rated at? It's not. So, we've possibly got two voltage supplies here and this one I have no idea on that looks more like a traditional transistor type setup so we've got a base there with a base resistor and the drive from that comes from over here somewhere so there's really not a lot on here it's conformal coated everything is restrained I mean look at this capacitor here that's just never going anywhere oh, my voice is going all croaky as well um, but there's really not a lot in here. There's less than I thought there would be. The 324 is being used to condition or amplify or both uh, the signals coming from the potentiometers that are mounted between the chassis frame and the uh, lower suspension arm, I believe it is on these, which tells this what height the wheel is at. These don't have a gyro, they don't have accelerometers, so when I say self-leveling, they will level all of the suspension um, bags up to the same height so for example like this on a flat surface the vehicle will sit like that but if you park on a step you'll sit off at an angle like this it's not like some of the later and the more advanced system that's used on the Audis of similar age where they do actually know whether this is level or not we have our microcontroller we have what are those they are 74HC14s, so they're being used as buffers or inverters, most likely to drive these transistor arrays down here, and these are almost certainly what's going to be driving the solenoids. Um, just notice something, this is all badged up as Range Rover, uh, Land Rover and Dunlop, and yet this says Lucas on the inside. So we've also got these that do look like power transistors, so I need to refresh my memory on just how many um, solenoid valves there are in the pack. And then I believe that is just a very basic 6800 based micro, I'm not sure. And we do appear to have a programming connector on here. Now interestingly, the diagnostics output of this is RS232 serial, it's not anything special. And I'm willing to bet that this is a programming and diagnostics header. Certainly we have four pins here which are direct to the microcontroller. Um, one of them... Uh, we're, no, we're all on these pins down here, so it'll be interesting to know what those are. And we've got another chip that's missing just in here, which I would guess is a serial EEPROM looking at it. The pinout looks fairly similar to uh, a serial type EE problem, so I'm not quite sure. Again, it's something that possibly got removed in development because they felt more memory was needed than this had, it had. and maybe it means that there were features deleted from this. But yeah, 
I mean, it, as I said, it's conformal coated, it's solid. Um, and we have a copy right there with the date. This will zoom in. Copyright Lucas Industries. So I don't know what the Dunlop connection is other than the uh, airbags, but yeah, there's not really much to this. Um, as I say, I would, there is someone who has reverse engineered this and written an Arduino version of this controller, and I will uh, try and find that and put a link down there. But really, that's all there is to this. It's not very exciting at all. Um, if you have one that is completely dead, then we've got protection diodes here. We have these tag tantalums, which I'm known to fail. We've got one marked IC8 there. What is that? That is a precision voltage reference, so that will be used in conjunction with that for our height sensing. But troubleshooting this, if this module is actually dead, should not be too hard for anyone that knows how to use a multimeter. You'll struggle getting through the conformal coat, but other than that, it shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, take care. Bye.